Hello. So for this month's newsletter letter, I thought I'd try something different. And this being the year of surrender, I've been digging deep into what that means for me and a lot of things that I've been doing for many years now, and in this case the newsletter, to see if there's other ways of approaching it that align more with the way that I work and also the way that I communicate with the world and what aligns intuitively. What's really interesting and has prompted me for these changes is recently through a friend uh, who runs the blog Hikarui. Uh, she is a London-based artist photographer named Chikae. Check out her blog. It's Hikarui. I'll put the link underneath this video recording or audio recording so that you know where to find her. But she had introduced me to some podcasts and being a really heavy listener of many podcasts and also being a lover of audiobooks, it really aligned with me. And one of the ones that she had introduced me to was called Marketing Personalities by Britt Colo. And I found it really inspiring because the way that Britt introduces marketing and although it's very business oriented, she does it from the point of view of Myers-Briggs personality types. And as some of you may know or not know, I am an INFJ. And that's kind of how the conversation started with Chikai. But after sharing with her that I am, she had introduced me to a few podcasts that she thought would align. And one of them being this. And what was interesting is when Britt talks about the way that we communicate and market ourselves to the world, that it really depends on each personality and the way that feels right to us. And for me, I translate that as what feels like it aligns intuitively. And she breaks it down for each personality type. And what I found fascinating was that each personality has a different way of presenting things to the world that feels good to them. And that's her message is always about doing what feels good because that what helps to make other people feel aligned with what you're doing. And I'm all about authenticity as well. And for INFJs, she mentioned that there is this need for some freedom and flexibility in the way that information is presented. But within that, there needs to be a little bit of structure. And I'm sure many of you have looked up online or have looked into best ways of communicating or best ways of sharing content or best ways of, I don't know, whatever you want to put into that blank. But there is always some kind of formula that's presented. But what she explains is that that may be good for one type, but it might not feel right for another. And I've tried so many different ways of doing this over the years. And of course, we're all unique. And even within these personality types, we're all going to be very different in the way that we present material and what feels good to us. But after trial and error, I found that the things that she had described that fits well with an IMJ, for example, uh, sharing content consistently is important, but doing it in a way that's more freeing or freedom based. And so maybe content is presented through audio or video or writing, depending on what feels aligned at that moment, really felt great for me because up until this point, I felt that it was necessary to stick to one medium or one type and that feels very stifling. Whereas for another personality type, it might not be. So knowing yourself is, I think, really key. And again, you know, this year being the year of surrender, I thought that I would really take the time to explore and experiment and see what feels right for myself because I feel that at the end of the day, that's going to be the most authentic way of sharing my voice with you. And so through this newsletter that I put out once a month at the beginning of the month, which again, to give you an example, is my parameter, within that I want to bring in more flexibility and freedom because that's very important to me and the way that I run the studio, the way that I approach my art practice and the spiritual practice as well. And so I'm going to try recording the letter this month and see how it goes. 
So this month, the topic that came up and one that had been capturing my attention was this idea of purpose. And again, that's a big topic, I think, uh, that runs through my own practice as well. And more specifically, is that purpose driven by what we as individuals want to do? Or is that purpose driven by what the outside world is asking for us to do or, or making us want to do? And this topic came up through another podcast I listened to, and it's called Art Juice. Uh, the hosts are um, two artists that have conversations. One, her name is Alice Sheridan, and the other is, other is Louise Fletcher. I'll put their links as well so you can check out their uh, artwork and the, the podcast, which is really great. But one of the episodes, they were talking about this idea of purpose, and a lot of times artists feeling that what is the point of doing art? It's, it can feel frivolous at times or that it can feel that there's no deeper meaning to it. And I can't remember which uh, artist had said this, but it was really profound for me in that she said that maybe art, the act of creating art itself is not necessarily going to change the world. For example, you know, one painting might not, or it might, you never know, but she was saying that, but that's, not really the focus you know the focus is that one as an artist or as a creative do you have that drive that need to express yourself creatively and does that bring you true joy and connection and a way to express yourself into the world it's almost like you can't imagine not doing it because it feels so detached from your true self and some people including myself i've realized through my pregnancy and it sometimes being difficult to do creative work is that you start to feel very disconnected from yourself and your soul and spirit. And that's when I realized, oh, creativity is such a huge part of my happiness and well-being. And I, I feel almost depressed when I'm not able to do something creative. And it doesn't, again, this is being able to be free and choose mediums, but I, I realized for myself that creativity is not necessarily one medium. For some it might be, you know, just painting, but for me I think creativity can be in so many different forms and I think that's what I love about it. Just making, I think, brings me a lot of joy. Anyways, going back to their conversation, so one of the women talked about this idea of their drive being Creating art, again, not maybe one-to-one -one connection of change in the world, but that maybe by creating a painting, it will affect another person. And maybe that person will possibly have grown up with that painting in their home, or they might have seen it in a show, or something about it sparked something within them, inspired them to pursue whatever it is that they want to do in the world. And maybe that person ends up being the first inventor of some amazing product that will help clean up the ocean or, you know, so you never really know how things connect. There's no way to know that. But what I really loved about this conversation that they're having is that we all have a purpose in this world, whether it may not be as glitzy and glamour based as some high profile individuals, but even then that we all have our gifts and we all have something to bring into this world and it's all interconnected. And that that is more important to focus on than making a huge impact or doing something that's so miraculously life altering that that is our drive, you know, in order to feel fulfilled, we must get to that point. And I think that's missing the mark because we end up stressing ourselves out, we end up pushing ourselves beyond our limits, and maybe that's not even our path. Maybe it's something simpler, or maybe it's something more quiet. And again, going back to the personality types, I'm not saying that it's 100% accurate by any means, but by taking the time to self-reflect and getting to know ourselves deeper in the way that we operate our minds and our hearts and our spirits and it's going to be a lifelong process but the more that we know the more that it helps us to align with our natural life rhythm and what makes us understand how we create 
what it is that brings us true joy and happiness. And so I think for this month, the focus and constant, I guess, revisiting would be anytime this idea of, oh, is what I'm doing really making a difference? Does it really matter? And the answer is, yes, it matters if it aligns with you and it brings you happiness and joy, whatever it may be, gardening or cooking or anything, spending time with friends. But I think the more that we have that in our lives, again, the more that there's this energy flowing through us that can affect another person. And we have no control of how it affects another person. But knowing that we're putting that out there, I think is a huge, huge deal when we think about all the things that are happening in this world, the negative energies and you know things that are out of our control, the one thing that we can offer is how we present ourselves. And it starts with how we feel internally and what is connecting with us. So in closing for this month, maybe some of the questions we can ask ourselves are, what brings me true joy in more of a simpler aspect of life? Are there ways to bring that spark and that joy into our everyday within the things that we do, whether, again, it's washing dishes or spending time with our friends and family? And is there something specific that we do, which we might take for granted because we're wanting it to become more than what it is right now, when maybe in reality, how it is right now is enough to sustain our happiness. And maybe it, there's really nothing more to do. Maybe it's more about diving deeper into that one aspect. So I leave you with these questions. And I look forward to connecting with you again next month in the newsletter. I don't know how it's going to be, whether it's going to be a video or another recording or writing, but I hope you enjoy it. And thank you so very much for your continued support. And for those who are new to the newsletter, welcome. Thank you so much for subscribing. And I look forward to connecting again next month.